and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the What Did He Say podcast. It's your boy Chingo Blingo with the big tamarindo we have in the building. Marisol with the... Uh, I, I, I need a makeup or rhyming one like that. Marisol. What's the one? This Marisol. No, no, no. This Marisol. My name is Marisol. I'm number one. My reputation is having fun. So if you see me, don't step aside because this girl don't take no fly. There you go. There you go. And that's who I am. Uh, welcome to another episode. Uh, excited to be back. The studio is looking great. It's getting nice and organized. But right now, I want to welcome everybody to the fam, to the fam lamb, to the fam bam, <laughs> los patrones. That's right, everybody that's been hitting up the Patreon. Uh, bless them with some new music today. Uh, music that's not, probably may not be released. We're going to see what the patrons think because son los patrones. We got to do what they say. And the patrons also... Tomorrow, we will ship out their free bobblehead for joining on Patreon. And because this episode is for sure going to go on, on the Patreon app and uh, isn't it, can't get taken down, won't get censored, mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to act a motherfucking fool. I'm cussing everything. So there's your, there's your, uh, <laughs> there's your, there's your, uh, that's your heads up. That's your warning. If you got kids in the car, tell them put their headphones on and stare at that motherfucking iPad. We cussing. Yo, we we grown so folk. So I want to shout out some patrones right now, some of the people from the Patreon. <sighs> if you want more info, go to patreon.com forward slash chingo blink. April Rocha, muchísimas gracias. <laughs> Ariana Jimenez, Avi Rivera, Avi. He sounds like he could be like a Jewish Mexican. Mm. Uh, Bronson, that boy just put one name. Uh, Chris Avalos, <laughs> Claudia Sainz. Like Chris Bronson. Claudia Sainz, Erica Cardoza, Ever, Javier, Jackie, Janet Pantaleon, Jesus Delgadillo, Juanita Cordova, Marco Moctezuma, ay cabrón, Mary what? Marie Williamson. Oh. A little bit for diversity. Matt Chapa, Melanie Mendoza, Melissa Arredondo, Miguel Venegas, the homie Mike Bailey, Sabino Gonzalez, Samuel Renteria, Teresa Salazar Martinez, and so many more. We really appreciate you guys. You guys make this podcast possible. It's brought to you by the Patreons. Thank you. However, also shout out to Eighth Wonder, man. They got some delicious vodka out. You know, that's not an ad. That's not a sponsor. I just wanted to throw that out there. Because May 3rd. We are working with them. Eighth we are Wonder, partners May 3rd. Eighth Wonder Brewery. Man, if you did not attend first annual Chingo de Mayo, then you don't know what I'm about to tell you. But we're going to have to hand out some some uh, rash ointment cream because all the twerking that's going to be going on. We're you so know, sometimes a little bit of dirt. And dust get up in the crevices and you twerking all day and you've been drinking micheladas and stuff and, and doing a grito contest and you just having a time of your life, that's why you might need to be prepared. So it was hot last year. Hopefully this year it also does not rain, but it's the second annual. And either way, we're going to be dancing cumbia in the rain if it does rain. It See was no? boiling hot last year. But we have refreshing craft beer. Houston's own independent brewery, Eighth Wonder, the home of the second annual Chingo de Mayo. You know what I'm saying? I'm sorry. Can you believe it's the second annual? Second annual. We learned a lot on the first one. Okay. So. I am going to give you guys a little bit. <clears throat> Man, that voice. I'm going to give you guys. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm doing a podcast with shades on. Bitch. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because we really not giving a fuck. Just for the patrons. <laughs> uh, okay. So, crazy little back behind the scenes things about the Cinco de Mayo thing. Chingo de Mayo, excuse me. So when Trademark. Chingo came to me and he said, Babe, I want to throw a festival. I want to throw a festival. I want to throw the Cinco de Mayo party. I said, what? Like, it's only like two and a half months away. Are you aware? I was like, yes, I don't give a damn. He's I like, want a festival. Make me a festival. And... We made you a festival. And, hey, that was my cumpleaños. Mi hijo quiere festival. I'll do a festival. So I made it happen. But guys, what y'all don't know is literally that festival was planned in a month and a half. And it was packed. And it was packed. We pulled it off. There was nothing janky about it. We had merch. We had great, we had great uh, talent. Website. Uh, website. Branding. Videos. Everything from the... From the art that uh, our creative director David Melgar made for us, and, you know and, what I'm saying? And amazing, amazing performers and uh, musicians. We had speak speaks in the house from uh, Mexico City. Totally. That's when I met Bo Bundy. As y'all know, me and Bo have already done like two songs, and we have another one uh, brewing. 
Um, but who else was there? We had El Dusty. Yeah, El Dusty. You know, we Dust. had um, Peligrosa. We had... <laughs> Shout out to all those guys because they made it so crunk. And it was crazy thing. Hopefully... Uh, well, I know that this guy listens to the podcast because he told us he does. But the guy that was getting down on the dance floor the whole oh, yeah, night, yeah, yeah. y'all. Check mm -hmm. it. I wanted it there. Oh, my bad. Because I wanted it in my shot, too. But it's cool. Talking about the little chimbo bobblehead, which all the patrons, we're going to be mailing those out tomorrow. We're shipping those out. Yes. But anyway, going back to my story, the crazy thing is um, we love going to Whole Foods. Like, we really do, like sad but um that's kind of where we have our dates sometimes haven't gone in a while i guess it's not sad because i love going there actually where are we taking the girls for ice cream after this oh oh maybe chocolate they, bar or um i don't know either either we can go to whole foods to they can have moshi or we go to find somewhere where there's oh they have ice cream at the chocolate bar place too so that's possible and it's down the street from us Anyway, I, I kind of I'm kind of liking the Whole Foods option better. Yeah, we're going. Okay. Anyway, so crazy thing is, we go to Whole Foods the next day, and this guy comes up to Chingo, and he was like, "Hey, what's up?" Hey, the party was crunk. The party was crunk. We were like, "What?" Who the fuck is this at Whole Foods talking? Yeah, because he was all like professional <laughs> now, you know. <laughs> he wasn't doing the worm on the dirt. Oh my God, guys! This guy was making it happen on yeah. the dance floor. He was. Yeah, he doing said it all. He I didn't mean, give a damn. He got it. Crunk. I was holding back a little bit. <laughs> a know, lot of it. I didn't want to twist my ankle on. on on, on gravel but uh homeboy didn't give a damn he said fuck gravel exactly and so it was crazy because we were like oh shit you're the guy that was on the dance floor he's What's like up? he's like you don't recognize me hold on watch this drop down did a burpee <gasps> totally remember this word <laughs> <laughs> remember when i hit the word in the gravel oh what's oh, up my fool God. it was so damn good. what you doing man i work here fool. and he started breaking down uh Whole Foods ethical treatment of animals. Yeah, we like, know. Yeah, dog, cows play. We give them balls to play in the field. It's hilarious because <laughs> I just think it's crazy that, um, you know, I mean, everybody does it. On, during the week, you're, you know, Mr. 8 to 5. And then, you know, on the weekend, you know, it's, it's, it's time for you. You're not Mrs. or Mr. 8 to 5, you know? Yeah, yeah. You're so not anyway, the Whole Foods seed food. Exactly. Manager. So it was funny because, um, you know, he, he made it, you know, he made it worth his while. He had a great time and... He came out and, you know, it was just crazy to see him. But it was honestly, um, I was very stressed out because obviously, as you guys know, I also handled the tour. So I was extremely stressed out because I didn't know how I was going to make this festival happen. But the city showed up, showed love. Totally. And it was great. Uh, the Michelada contest was on fire. That's where I feel probably needs some improvement and it will be a lot more improved this year, guys. So if you were somebody who entered the michelada contest mm -hmm. um it was a little bit chaotic at the beginning and, and then, this year we're doing a crowd favorite winner too yes we're doing the people's choice award. yeah people's choice for the michelada so that means that the people at, that are attending the festival will get to actually vote on your michelada so if you are not from houston and you want to come out make sure you buy your tickets if you're a city, patreon guess what yeah, yeah. you got the link first yeah we already to did, buy it buy there. tickets so thank you if you've already purchased your tickets so the city came out it was epic mark your calendars may 3rd 2020 is the second annual chingo de mayo at eighth wonder so if you haven't yet check out the um episode where we talked about the, yeah um, we should probably have ryan back on um ryan the ceo of uh, eighth wonder yeah so long beach was lit fresno was lit um, let's talk about that for a little bit. Um, when we first, first of all, we had to get up early as a motherfucker because those are the sacrifices you make when you want to leave out, leave out of town the day of the show and you're going to be traveling all day. Well, let's talk day. about why we do, why we just started to do I'm, that. That's yeah. what I'm setting up, which is say the show's on a Friday. Normally, eh, I leave on a Thursday, you know, get a feel of the city. Time. Yeah, like come in and review your notes because now you're just isolated and you you can focus better, um, you know. But you know we got little ones, we got kids and stuff, so it's kind of like let me uh, let daddy sacrifice. So it's gonna be a little bit less prep time. It's gonna be a little bit more down to the wire and hectic. So we had plenty of shit to get done at uh, home. So we kind of needed that extra little time too. And not to mention last year, I guess. Uh, patrons, do Sorry. not be alarmed. Do not be alarmed. I didn't want to burp on the Okay, I thought mic. she was a little, Sorry, guys. little brain fart. No. So, 
the first year Penny was born and I got back on the road with you, we were still kind of doing it different to where you were taking off the night before mm -hmm. and I was taking off the day of the show mm -hmm. to get there to be able to sell merch. Because I, was hitting, the, I was hitting the club in the, in the city, you know, I was, you know, chilling with the locals, turning up. Whatever. But, ooh, um, ooh. <laughs> so then we realized during that time that there was, we could, if we got there early enough, you know what I'm saying? that one we could save money on hotel <laughs> and uh two we could not be was, gone as much not, yeah, exactly not be gone as much and that's kind of where that little thing uh popped off the only time that i'm gonna say there's a couple of dates that we have on the tour this year where we're gonna have to get out there the day before mm -hmm. um but then most of them were able to which honestly is ideal it's yeah, ideal. that's ideal. Because you're actually giving your body a ch like really stress level. You really, guys, if you... If that way they could get a better performance, too, you know? I've started to vlog all our trips, especially when we're out of town. And the reason why I do that is because everyone always thinks like, oh, and, and guys, don't get me wrong. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Before I say that, this job is fun. It's fun for me. And yeah, I like I would, fun for I would perform for free. Like, you know, it's all the traveling part that come with it. <laughs> Well, you got to make it worth the while. Yeah, the traveling part is really hard. I'm just going to give you an example. So the day that we came back, which is Sunday, we were in Fresno. We were flying out of LAX. And the reason for that is because, again, you guys got to remember, I'm the one that makes the budget. And it was too expensive to fly to San Jose or fly out of Bakersfield. And what I mean by... Basically, it was a difference in dollar amount. It was it's a like, huge difference. It wasn't like, like a $100 difference. We're talking yeah. about like... Five hundred dollars difference to book that flight each, they're, they're which like, would have totaled a thousand dollars between the two of us. They're like, damn, bro, you chingo bling, bro. You're supposed to be able to just be like, fuck it. And you are able to. That's why you're able to take off a couple of months to regroup because we are tight during the year. Basically, what we're saying is the company jet is Southwest Airlines. Anyway, my point, my point to that was, is that Sunday we traveled, we got up, we took off at seven thirty in the morning. Drove all the way to LAX, mm -hmm. dropped off the rental, jumped on a plane. Couldn't hit no dispensary. <laughs> we didn't hit a dispensary. Barely got coffee. Barely got coffee. And then from there. How do you barely get coffee? Well, it's like we got it, but you know. You know what? I'm curious. Are most people like chuggers of coffee like you are or, or sippers. sippers? I'm a sipper facts. What about you? You know, it depends on, you know, I'm trying to get the effect. I've seen you like chug a coffee and I'm just like, ooh, I can't do that. No, hey. I can't. Opposites attract. I really like to savor. Actually, that's false. Do you know that the, they did this like clinical research? Well, you can't stump my whole <laughs> shit. Anything you say, <laughs> you know what? I got something for that. Uh, in 2003, there was a study by the uh, University of uh, Massachusetts. And uh, um, it was a blind placebo. <laughs> And what they conducted and found the hypotenuse of the hypothesis. Well, my point for Sunday was that <laughs> we left at 7.30 in the morning from Fresno, and we didn't make it to Houston until 9 p.m. So it was a fucking travel day. All travel day. But, uh, guess what? Uh, the Laugh Factory in Long Beach was packed in a mug. Um, so much love in that area, man. Like, California in general just shows so much fucking love. But, goddamn, so so SoCal... LA area is so huge, so many people that you're able to hit, you know, Pasadena and Burbank and Brea and Oxnard and Ontario and Irvine and Hollywood. And it's like, damn, you're seeing different crowds. And they're like, when are you going to come to Compton? When are you going to mm. come to Southgate? When are you coming over here? You know, and uh, Long Beach was lit. Got to work with Martin Moreno for the first time. Yeah. And uh, George, George Perez. Perez. Yeah. Yeah. Kicked Some veterans in the game. Man. Hilarious, and, and, guys. And not only did I learn so much just from watching them work. But, uh, you know, they gave me notes. They would give me some tips and advice and, you know, suggestions and mm -hmm. things like that. But a lot of props, too. Like, they really, like, boosted my confidence. They're just like, bro, we ain't never seen this club this packed. Like, you got a hell of a crowd. They, they're loyal as fuck. They got your back. Um, you know, they were like, you've come a long way for only doing stand-up for five and a half years. Like, in terms of everything we got going. I'm thanks to the agree. patrons. Thanks to the fans. Los patrones. Well, I saw you literally second show after you started your comedy career. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember my friend who introduced us sent me the video of Chingo's, <coughs> one of Chingo's first time on 
Was it your? It wasn't one of your very very. No, first it times. was. It was pretty much my very first time. <clears throat> okay, bless you. Um, bless you. and so I was like, okay, he's a lot funnier that was, person. I wonder what happened. Yeah, here. that was August fifteenth. And uh, I thought, oh, he must have been nervous. You know what I'm saying? And so I was like, oh, okay. Stand up is hard. It's very hard. I'm gonna I'm gonna agree with you because you get you get thrown in these situations like Late Show Fresno was a little bit thinner than usual and they you know they made you work for it not that they were like super rowdy but it's kind of like hey man it's not that many of us so you're gonna have to really connect with us engage us and like the dynamic like people were spread out you know there were a couple of little empty chairs in the front so I like play the game off top like <clears throat> I saw the George George Perez who featured. First of all, you have an OG headliner feature. That yeah. just shows how humble. Because a lot of motherfuckers that are like headliners and got credits and shit, they probably don't want to change their yeah. role. Yeah, They're yeah. too good, you mm-hmm. know. So shout out to them. Uh, I saw how George had to go off script and he started doing crowd work because he had to adjust to the crowd. Mm-hmm. So before he was even done introducing me, I just like ran up like we can't have no long jingle. Mm-hmm. Blah. With it's not super packed, so yeah, you cut them off. I cut them off and, and like act like I was shanking them just to let the crowd know we're improvising, like no holds barred. You have no idea what I'm about to do, and um, I want to test myself in that regard so that I can really start giving people a fun experience. Like, have you heard of stories of uh, Steve Martin when he was doing uh, clubs and, and theaters and shit? He would take the whole crowd with him to go get ice cream. Oh. Like they're doing a conga line and like you're following me and that's what people were paying to come participate. Interesting. Uh, <clears throat> so there's a lot of stuff like that where you can just bend the rules, like sure. you know. Okay, I was just trying to have a blind. I, I know, can't. but you can kind of hear it. Look, it gives the sound character, y'all. Like y'all are hanging with us. Uh, I even had the little fog machine going right before, so uh, you know. Oh, what kind of vibe was that? Like we're at the club or? Just like, you know, I want people to feel like with this podcast, I don't want it to be one of those like wham, bam, yeah, we're clocking in, we're talking for an hour, and then we're clocking out. We want it to be like, yo, episode 73, man, when you, you know what I'm saying, when Mm -hmm. you told that story or like, that shit was so relatable, like just intimate, a connection. From now on, everything I want to do, I just want it to be as funny as possible, as creative as possible. And really connect with the core audience, with the true, true, true fans. Yeah. You know, not the little uh, I might scroll past your shit. Somebody yeah. that's like really vested in. I'm, I'm counting on you. I'm putting my bets on you. You know what's funny? I don't know where <clears throat> I was. Jeez, I can't remember where I was. And I remember just watching someone. It was something on the air on the airplane, I think. And it was a younger person, and she was just going through Instagram, just liking everything. Fast. Like, really fast. Like, super duper fast. Do and she was just liking it. I'm like, you didn't even look at the picture. And you're just liking it. I ain't gonna lie. When I scroll, if I don't really care for your picture, I'm not gonna like it. Yeah. I Can't mean, give away all these likes. For I mean, free. you gotta work for the likes. And sometimes I even unfollow them because it's like, oh. Why would just, you post that? I'll yeah, follow. you're just really not that like, interesting. Sorry, Dia. I'm, I'm gonna have to unfollow you, so bye. Thank you, really, next. yeah. Thank you, next. Totally. So you, I next. was like, these little young millennials, like they don't even take the time to read what I wrote. They're just liking my picture. I'm over here struggling on this caption. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, just going back to what we're talking about. So, just wrapping up, tying a nice ribbon on our Cali trip. Uh, we're gonna be out there for the whole summer. <clears throat> I vlogged a little bit last year, and I'm turning it into like a a little web uh, reality show called like the blings take cali so season one is getting wrapped up and you know are we giving that to the patrons you know first? who's getting it oh, first okay. i thought so los patrones they need their own they need men. los patrones they need their own theme song our patreon people they need like they need custom beats like don't send us no regular beats we gave them new music today um you know, they, they need custom merch. Like, yeah. these hats are for the patrons. Well, we're going to get some stuff. It's brewing. So, patrons, stay tuned, guys. Patrons, we, submit your artwork. Yeah, so we're, we're excited about... Um, we're excited about it. You know you know what I feel the patrons is for, for, for me? Um, so, a while back, I had started a Facebook group, right? It was called The Hats of Life, which is still running, and it's being run on its own from the other women who joined. I now, like, 
never post. All I do is basically go in there and read to like, see. Like, like a, uh, what do they call them? Like ghost watch? What yeah, I just basically, and really why I, I, I watch it is to make sure no one's on there like being ugly because the whole purpose of my group on Facebook was I didn't want negativity, you know? So anyway, this reminds me of that because it's so much more intimate and literally there is... Um, in literally... Literally, no, really. every time we do a podcast, <laughs> this boy corrects me. <laughs> I'm and just I'm gonna start doing hey, it. To I'm him. just trying to be funny, anyway. Then I just say everything I do, the shit gotta be off the chain, creative, and funny. Then I just say that was, there was I'm nothing trying. creative about I'm that. I'm trying, literally. just so you know, okay. Literally, and literally like, it reminds me of that whole thing because I was able to speak to people, even those those people followed me on Instagram, right. It was the opportunity for me to be able to speak to them one on one rather than oh you sent me a DM I think I replied to you yeah I'm yeah not it's sure, more of a, you know? a different form a different type of platform yeah it was really cool um I think this is a really Community. cool thing it was Connection. really cool exactly that's what I love best about probably the podcast too is I feel like whenever people come up to me at the merch booth and they're like I love y'all's podcast I feel like oh, you're part of this little podcast tribe with us. You know what I'm saying? Because if you don't know about the podcast, you don't get what we've talked about. You're not going to get we, the inside joke. Like I told we, you the last time that that happened, where... Um, what did you uh, just call them? Podcast what? Tribe. Yeah. So, okay, go ahead. I'm going to hold my thoughts. Go ahead. <clears throat> no, go ahead. Go ahead. So, remember I told you that someone had sent me a message about, for someone who's so positive... or. or Oh, fake hair, fake eyebrows, fake lashes. Oh, but you're still cute, boo. Remember, I told yeah, you somebody to talk shit. trying to talk shit. Exactly. Bitch. So, Bitch, I got my shades on on this podcast. Bitch, this, we, we cussing on this motherfucker. Okay. So then a fan who listens to the podcast heard where, what I had said on the podcast, and then she sends me a DM joking. I rarely post selfies, guys. If you look at my Instagram, there's... Counted. Marisol is different. She's not the selfie type. So I just yeah, I don't really like selfies. I don't even know what to do with my face in a selfie. I try my hardest. Anyhow, um, just know that whenever I post a selfie, it probably took about a hundred tries before I got it. So anyway, so she tried to joke about it and she goes, she goes, fake hair, fake up, mm -hmm. and I didn't get it. And I was like, oh, excuse me. I was like, uh, and I wrote back, I was like, but Trick. I got the realest personality. Like I got crunk with her. She goes, Calm down. I was just quoting what you said on the podcast. <laughs> and so you better put quotes around it and put, remember what you said on the podcast? Or you fuck around, I might as well get an address I, on you. I apologize. I told her I was sorry. I was like, oh my God. I was like, girl. I was like, girl. Don't like, go there. Like, I was, I thought, she is, was gonna roll is up. this another one? Like, Jesus Christ. Like, I, that's why I said the last, I, actually, on the vlog that I'm dropping this today. It's funny because I said on there that people just are savages and it's like they all feel like they have the right to leave, you know, whatever kind of that's comment. The internet, though. Yeah, that it is, it is. And that's why I don't even care anymore. And it, it makes me more like laugh about them, like, wow, what inner issue are you having to where you feel like you have to leave this little like smart ass comment? I don't if I don't like something of something that I'm watching, I just don't watch it anymore. And I skip it and I find another video to watch, right? Or if I see something, I don't ever leave a bad comment on anybody's shit. I just don't comment. Are you going to get know? some barbecue in Kansas City? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm not really a barbecue person. Oh, because all the smoke? I, I, especially if it's smoked, guys, I get bad, bad, bad heartburn. And I, had, I learned that the hard way. It's so good, right? And it sucks because I can't really eat it because... I end up with some serious Man heartburn. Burps. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, <laughs> oh my god! The first time it happened to me, I was like, oh, why do I feel so awful? And then it was like, you might be like allergic to that much, because you know, when it's when it's a bunch of smoke, it's damn near like a, I don't want to say carcinogen, but like, um, it's something that burnt off. You know what I mean? Like it's the remnant of fire. I don't yeah, know. This shit I, I would rather go to like a little hole in the wall barbecue place when we go to Kansas City versus the big place we went to last time. It was great. Don't get me wrong. The food was good. I forget the name of the place. I want to say it's like Grady's or something like that. Yeah. Oh, wait. The fancy one? The with, fancy with my family? With your family. Oh, yeah. I don't remember the name. It was down there in that little developed area. Yeah. Um. So, 
that's the only thing I, I really enjoy going to people's places who are like little mom and pops and you know um, like that place we went to in Fresno that we found oh, by, the, yeah. by the hotel Birria tacos. it was you could tell it was family owned you can tell uh, that was the son working with the dad you know what I'm saying the tortilleras were probably like the aunts of the family you know what I'm saying so Birria it was tail. like um, I just really I enjoy that because it sounds I, like, like a rap hook you could tell but I mean, okay. so you could tell that tortilleras with the tip jar. You could tell that it's the son working with the dad. You could tell. <laughs> <laughs> this shit authentic, yeah. You could tell. But yeah, so I love places like that. And usually those type of places end up being better than... just like Even though you risk chorro a little bit. that's You run into risk sometimes because you never know. Okay, here's the reason for that. I've been eating. Oh my I didn't say I had chorro. I'm just saying my stomach was hurting. Do you not remember? Okay, yes. I was worried about what you were going to uh, confess. I didn't say I had chorro. I'm you know, just we're saying. syndicated. We, we people listening in about two, three countries Canada, Mexico, and here. Um, I got a really bad stomach. The food was so good, but I got a really bad stomach ache, and that's because I've been eating super clean. And so I haven't really had like shit made out of that kind of grease. You know what I'm saying? Like, Even though we did have Jack in the Box the other night. Yeah, but it's not that kind of grease. Does that make it's sense? It's like family owned and operated kind of grease. It's like that kind of grease where, yes, this was part of the pig. Like maybe I shouldn't have drank that consomme. Yeah, like it was juice. exactly. And but so, it had like straight grease. Um, I think that's what fucked up my stomach. And I was like, I remember I told you, I was like, yeah, I should probably not try to eat bad food like that you know what i'm saying like i should probably like ease into it versus like shit this is good you know we, what I'm saying? we also have naples florida coming up uh the spot is called uh, off the hook and their food is off the hook that's where i was going oh my with. god um, the seafood and the pasta and the damn the selections like that place like that's i'm not gonna lie to you when i know we're going off the hook i'm look like forward hell to it. yes fuck around food cheat is day. so good i know because marisol and the dj booth for the lobster yes <laughs> I was like, and he's like, you can order whatever you want. I'm like, you know, because at first you're kind of like, no, I'm good. No, I'm going to eat. Naples, Florida. If and you then... want to see me on stage fat, <laughs> uh, I will see you there. Off the hook comedy spot. And it's like a restaurant in the daytime. So obviously while you're eating the food and, you know, it's like you're at a comedy club, but you're not. Because normally comedy club is just more simple, basic stuff. But they, they do well as far as like. Yeah, uh, a lot of the like clubs have good uh, as, as good far food. as like they. No, no, no. I mean, like, as in. They run the club well, meaning like they seat people. Yeah, they bring they're, they're, good they're still they're still um, you know they they try to run like a comedy club. So I, I, for it being a restaurant during the day, I'm very impressed at the fact that they still are run a pretty yeah. a good show. I mean, for us to even do it there, you yeah, know, you know it's got to be a good fan experience. Yeah, so I really love the food there, but yeah, so um, and then we got ATL Ho after that, and West Palm Beach. Wait, ATL then West Palm. Or West Palm, then ATL. I think it's West Palm, then ATL. Oh, shit. I need to start including that. Or um, maybe West Palm is not until April. Puta, man, no sabemos. Total, este, I know we're coming to Atlanta for sure. At uh, Atlanta Comedy Theater. That, I think that's over there. Like, Gwinnett. I think the name of the area is like Northside. I don't recall. It's that way. Mm-hmm. So whatever what's, amigos what's the What's the food in, El, in Atlanta? <clears throat> well, Atlanta is known for Chick-fil-A. They're also known for varsity hot dogs. That's like one of their old landmark, like a drive through burger, burger fries type joint. Is it like a... It's like Coney Island, but off the chain. Oh. Mm. But off the chain. Okay. It, they like put it, it's part of their culture. So they, it's an iconic sign. Got it's it. a, uh, people take pictures there. Oh, it's They put the it in movies. They put it in videos. The, um, it's, they have one of those. They have one in the airport. airport right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I need to hit my boy Roland up from out there. And, um, Paco, Sumo, a bunch of homies I got out there. Cap G and all his brothers and shit. Uh, see what's cracking. So Atlanta, we did not go there last year. So uh, Or the we, year before. No shit. The last time we were there was 2016. No shit? Wow. Wow. That's unbelievable. So I'll tell you this. Um, the show is going to be lit, man. I think y'all are really going to enjoy the show. Mm -hmm. Because uh, last time I was there, it was different material. And uh, I'm, I'm proud of what we're cooking up. So we got a lot of new jokes and stuff in development. Mm -hmm. and, and I love performing, man. Um, I love this gig. Um, you know, and we just want to take a, a 
what, what's the word, man? Uh, you know, a vibe type of approach on the podcast. That's why I had cameras going, and even though it was fucking up the sound, <laughs> you know, like, thank you for your patience. It? It's okay. They want to hear, you know, flames and shit in their headphones or, or in the car. <laughs> while, they're, while they're driving to work? Yeah. It's relaxing. You don't notice I always play part of my night routine is I'll have like the little rain I know, sound. I hate it. The rain or some type of little sound, you know. Um, you know, one thing I want to start doing on the podcast is like bling advice. I don't know. Like, uh-huh. like uh, whatever. Like and let so, people send in questions. Yeah. So if, if you would like some advice from the blings mm-hmm. or you're in a little situation and you're like, what would the blings do? Yeah. And if you're a patron, and if you're a patron, you're already going back and forth with me on the little DM. And in case you guys don't know, um, guess what? He is the one working the app. You're actually talking to Chingo, just so you know. It's not me. It's not a robot. It's actually Chingo replying to your messages. And it's obvious because I'm able to, uh, on Patreon, it has like a Snapchat, Instagram story type of function. Okay. It's called Lens. So I, like, well, my phone's recording, but mm-hmm. um, I can open up the Patreon app right now. Click uh, like the plus sign and then click on lens and now I can like I upload it from the gym. Oh, yeah. oh wow! Yeah, I upload it from the gym. So, so I have a question for so you. So it's though. like it's basically, <clears throat> it's like a private. It, this should sound perverted as shit. But it's like a private Instagram, basically, right? Because if you're a patron, you're the only one that has access to that. Unless I post something, else, you know, I, I don't want to do that. So I didn't post. Like, whenever I post some shit on the lens on a Patreon, I don't post nothing uh, from that activity or place or whatever. Um, I have a question for you. Mm-hmm. So, um, same way you can see on Instagram, like, who saw your who saw your videos? Uh-huh. You're able to see that on yeah. the... Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, it tell, and it'll wow, tell you if it's a tier cool. one or tier two what? type of person. No so, way. this is what I was going to say earlier. I didn't want to interrupt. You said something about Podcast Tribe. So... Let's see if uh, somebody can give us a suggestion because, you know, like the church of what's happening now, they're going to say, like, welcome to the church or I'm a member of the church. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, 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 uh, yeah. The Flagrant 2 podcast, Andrew Schultz, uh, they're a uh, flagrant army. So mm. flagrant army. Um, you know, everybody has like their little. The what did he say? Glica. The Glica. Pinche pandilla, güey. What did he say? Los patrones. Um, and it's not, it's not just. I think when we first started it, like when we first came up with it, we wanted to make it very like podcast centric. If that's the word, like it's like almost like the the online home of the podcast or whatever. But I want to make it more for like just the diehard fans that just might be like, oh shit, I got a poster in the mail. I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, yeah. It's like, well, remember you gave us your address? Okay, so I'm uh-huh. guilty at one point of being on the Kim Kardashian app, and so I would pay the little. One ninety nine a month is what she would charge, right? And I know that everyone's like, why does she freaking like the Kardashians so much? I already told you guys, it has really nothing to do with that. It's the way they operate that amazes me, especially the way Kris Jenner, the mom, operates on everything. Well, all of them. They all have something happening. But anyway. Except for Rob. Ooh. Ooh actually, Rob has a socks. Nah. The King George Arthur or some shit. Of yeah, this sex. episode's for the patrons. So I don't give a damn. I'm talking shit. I'm talking shit. That's what the people want. Yeah, that's what y'all want. Y'all want me to talk shit and talk talk your shit, Chingo. Put that in the comments. He's actually very rude. Who, Rob? No, you. Oh. Uh, when you're when you want to talk shit, so don't let them piss you off. Who? Just people in oh, general. Rob Kardashian. <laughs> I'm just saying, me vale madre, wey. Mira, tengo 40 años, wey. You know how Joey Diaz always be saying, like, I'm, he's always like, I'm 56, and, you know, who, what are you gonna, where are you gonna find me from? Like, who the fuck? Who's yeah. gonna censor me? I know. You know what's so funny, though, is that sometimes I think because... I just, I'm just scared, because I already got kicked off of YouTube once. Well, you know what's funny for me? It was like, um, I'm waiting for someone to eventually make a comment on the vlogs and say, does she ever wear makeup? Does she ever fix her hair? Because I always uh-huh. have... You know, just funky as, you know, bun, and I'm never wearing makeup. I wear glasses, sunglasses all the time. I'm in gym clothes. I'm just waiting for someone to leave a shitty-ass comment about that. But, you know, here's the thing. It's like, the other day I was like, I don't care. <laughs> I don't. Like, if I wanted for you guys to see a fake version of myself, then I would 
That's do a the fake version of myself. You know what I'm saying? But legit, that is how I run around all day long. Body soil is pretty fucking authentic. And that's what I look like. I don't just get ready for fun. Like, I, I get ready because we're going somewhere. Uh, you know, like, mm-hmm. but when I'm running around doing errands and doing all that, I mean, I'm not trying to get dolled up, you know? So that's partially the reason why I like wearing a wig because I wake up with my hair done and I, and then, you know, your hair is done. You got to worry about your makeup, you know? So my thing behind that is, is the reason I enjoy wigs so much is because I wake up and my hair is done. Uh, before we wrap up, because we're going to take the girls to go get some ice cream, probably at Whole Foods, I believe. Hopefully, El Compa is there. Um, uh, tell them your podcast, and we're trying to figure out what day. First of all, we're trying to meet my deadlines, too. <laughs> like, Chingo, what's your day for uploading? But uh, it's called Her. Her Lounge Podcast. And uh, I've only done two episodes right now because I haven't really figured out when I'm going to drop, if I'm dropping every other week or every week. Um, I think I'm recording tomorrow for well, sure. Well, we want to be consistent. We want to be weekly. So if that's something you want, you know, anybody listening, if, if this is what you want, you know, support it. Uh, we'll make it a priority because um, we'll, we are busy as a motherfucker. And for instance, if I'm understand if I'm spending time in the podcast studio, you know, which is a priority and I enjoy doing it and I think it's important, but that's it it's less likely that I'm going to go to open mic that day, it's less likely that I'm going to hit a music studio that day cuz I still got to go pick up kids from school, yeah. do regular shit, um other stuff, at taxes and well, we were talking about that today. I said, if I had an assistant, what exactly could she really do for me? Or he? Yeah, because some stuff... Because some things, all majority of things, have to be done by us. Like, I just... Sometimes I want to delegate this stuff. Okay, like, maybe the only thing would be, like, can you go grocery shopping for us? Oh, yeah, but there's an app for that. But now I order my... That's what I'm getting at. Now I can order my groceries on the app, and they get delivered to my house. So, no need for that. There's little things that I guess we could need. We need an, a personal assistant for, but we maybe we're just like um. Uh, no, it's just that the nature of uh the way we these are. like the the stuff we do. Like you can't go in the studio for me. You're not. Yeah. It's a different voice now. It's you writing your lyrics. Like mm-hmm. you, you can't replace me there. Um, I mean, you could be a guest on the podcast, but you, I still kind of got to be here for my mm-hmm. podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so some stuff we still got to. Be present and do and certain parts of your business you got to keep your eyes on you know so you got to be involved mm-hmm. with knowing like knowing which you know which merch piece is moving better than others and it's up to you to know be on top of your shit and cover your ass yeah it's, so there's a lot of stuff like that that we have to yeah so be on top of so so the going viral tour is going great hope to see you guys in a city near you for more info hit up chinglebean.com click tour and uh, we will be in Kansas City coming up this Thursday, Kansas City. And and uh, we do want to start taking the podcast on the road. Mm-hmm. So in Kansas City, we will be doing Airbnb there, just so you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I and, thought you meant live on the road. Uh, huh? Like, li- like live at the Improv, attend and be in the audience for... The, the podcast, podcast on oh, the no, road. I was talking about like now we can record in the record hotel, the hotel with the uh, with the guys, so that we could have like midnight and hobby or on this show for Kansas yeah. City. It'd be cool to just sit there and chit chat. You just see that? Like, you see that black case Jose gave me? It's like a thick. You see it? Uh, it's a big. You see it right there? Mm-hmm. Maybe that gets checked under the plane, but I'm gonna have to basically start bringing. That's what we're trying to avoid, right? I want in a perfect world, I want to be able to bring. The quote unquote podcast set up in my backpack. Oh, you see oh, what I'm so, saying? So that doesn't work, that little thing that we, we brought with us this last. Well, the way Xavier was telling me is with the Zoom, you still want to plug in, like, you still want to bring two mics with mm. you to plug into it. Got it. Um, versus just trying to straighten into it or whatever. Mm. That makes mm. sense. So, anyway, long story short, eventually. We want to tour with the podcast and do theaters and have to, you know, add shows. Yeah, I would love to be able to do like that. that. I loved being able to meet everybody the day of um, that we did the live podcast here in Houston. 
I probably love the most being able to meet everyone and just put a face to the person who says, I love your podcast. Mm -hmm. You know, I really enjoy, I just really like meeting everybody, to be honest with you. My favorite though is I always want to crown me someone like, I've been a fan of Chino since I was in there. Yeah. It's like a proud mom. I'm like, thank you. You're like, damn, he's always fun. <laughs> no, I'm always like, thank you for, you know. Still in the game. You. People like the, uh, we got good feedback on the on that last episode where I told a lot of music business stories. Oh, yeah, because they like that, yeah. Yeah, so. The- and we want to give you guys more more behind the scenes. A, a, lot of the, a lot of times, I think the issue is, is that we think they are going to probably think it's boring, so we don't talk about it. You know, we're like, to know about that shit like there's a lot okay i'm gonna give you an example i was very upset with um something that went down at one of the comedy clubs who pissed you off baby well it it wasn't necessarily that i got was pissed off i just didn't like the way things were were going and so what i mean by that is like don't take it out on the family it's like no never (laughs) of course not you know it's not their fault they don't have any idea what goes on behind the scenes you know but when, whenever, like, you know what I'm saying, I think about all the things that, you know, that we go through, if they even knew, like, partial of the situations that, you know, some of the behind the scenes that happen, like, prepping, I try to record as much as I can on the vlogs to show them how, what it takes for us to prep for, for every, everything that we go out of town for, mm-hmm. to getting the schedule for Mickey so that we're able to have her when we get back in town, when we are in town, are we able to have, you know what I'm saying? To making sure that podcast is there. Did this go out? Did that get done? Did taxes mm-hmm. get done today? You know what I'm saying? Coordinate so some, the babysitter. Exactly. Coordinate the babysitter. You guys have to remember, someone said, oh, you're lucky because you have a babysitter, so you don't have to like worry about anything. No. Like, bitch. You don't even know. I wish I had a babysitter so I can do whatever I wanted to do. I have a babysitter because we got to work. And it's like, we don't just get a babysitter so that we can go have fun. Wouldn't yeah. that be nice? It's like, we got to go podcast. Yeah, we have to go work. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? So, when, literally... When They're like, wait, saw... who's watching y'all's kids right now? <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. We're about to go relieve her right now. So, literally, the minute Luisa walks into the door, we the clock, got, is the clock is ticking. It begins there, <laughs> and we go all the way through nonstop until it's like, all right, it's pretty close to 5 p.m. We should probably find a... Yeah. A stopping point? What do you think? Yeah, it's like, well, I got a couple I don't things know. done. We still got a few things done. I don't know. Should we? And then it's like, man, it's like, we're just going to have to do I got to upload tomorrow. these goodies for the patrons. Yeah. It's hard, guys. You guys have no idea. Sometimes it's it, the girl. Sometimes I put Penny to sleep, and, and Chino and I are sitting at the dining table discussing business versus just having a regular conversation. Yeah, that, that's just how it is when you're independent and you're an entrepreneur. But. Uh, we appreciate all the support because the YouTube's growing, the podcast is growing, everything's growing, everything's going great, going viral is is off to a great start. Sold out shows and uh, excited for the rest of the tour. Yeah, same here. Meet you guys in person. And uh, once again, shout out to Los Patrones. Patreon.com forward slash Chingo Green. Peace. See you next time, guys. Salalaban. <laughs>